So here I am. And I've been taking a break from social media, which has been so invigorating, refreshing. And even right now, making this video, I feel like I'm just making it for the archives, because this probably isn't going to get posted anytime soon. Because I don't have any driving desire to get back on there anytime soon. But I just felt compelled to pick up my phone and start talking. So, here I am. Ryan Swain. Lover of all things good. And all things are ultimately good. It's become a really abundantly clear to me as of late. So I've really just been pulled back and spending most of my time in solitude, tuning into things and feeling into things as I always do. And we live, and I speak mainly as an American, but we live in a culture where, oh, and I'm picturing Asian cultures right now too and realizing that they're steep in it, where the smile is used unconsciously and with good motives, but the smile is used to keep others at bay, to keep others from getting upset. It's a total barrier to authentic interaction because when somebody, you know, I picture so many Asian cultures, like they just, they're like in that smile all the time. Huh? And so many Americans, you go into any public place and most people are doing that. Uh, sorry if it's getting a little windy. Let me pause for a little bit. All right. I hate that wind sound on the playback, so I'm trying to be conscious of you, the viewer, the listener. And so ultimately we think that we want to live in a society where other people's aggressions and other people's real responses to the real us are kept inhibited and kept at bay and kept away, essentially. And it's all happening unconsciously, and that's ultimately why I speak to it. I bring the unconscious into the conscious and give people an opportunity to feel into it, to think into it, and to come into a knowing for themselves about what I speak. Because we've been taught that a smile is, is good. You know, smile! I'm picturing so many families, you know, taking family photos and you got like the teenager that's kind of like in like a sourpuss mode or at least what would pe people would call that. And then when the camera comes out, come on, smile. They want to get him to smile. Come on, smile. But those teenagers are really trying to hold on to their authenticity, trying to hold on to what's real. They're the ones going like, I, if I don't feel like smiling, why would I smile? It's not authentic, you know. A lot of times teenagers aren't conscious enough to really know what they're doing, but they're holding on to truth, whether they know it, whether they realize it or not. And that whole family pressure, society pressure to smile so you know, you're never going to get a job if you can't play by the rules. <laughs> Just reading a text as it comes in. So, hey, I'm going to pause you for now. So it's a few days later. I was recording that video coming down the mountain two or three days ago. I just, all I remember is that I was talking about the fake smile and how it's used to keep everything at bay. And ultimately, hey, I'm walking. I'm walking. Ha <laughs> ha
Oh, that was great. You got to be with me for that. So I'm walking down the sidewalk and I'm in, you know, the pedestrian lane and pedestrians have the right of way and this car is like pulled right up. Basically, boom, I'm like right there. So me being me, I just tapped on the car and like looked at the driver until they backed up and then I kept walking. <laughs> and then I don't know if you caught that at the end. But she rolled down her window and she said, the People's Republic of Boulder. Which is hilarious because I've heard that term a few times, People's Republic of Boulder. And from what I gather, the, that is really, that comes from people who have a conservative mindset in terms of politics. And they, and because Boulder is very liberal. And so certain things that people are staunch about in the liberal mindset. The conservatives just love to hate it. And so there's just me walking and not liking that someone with a big hunk of metal that's got an engine in it drives right up in my way as though I, there isn't a lane there and as though I don't exist. And then she, she projects on to that some, you know, liberal controlling, like, like I'm I'm uh, more, what's the word, uh, entitled, yeah, that's it, that I'm entitled. And wow, yeah, so let's look at that word entitled, that's what's coming up really strong right now, is to look at that. Entitled, entitlement, people use that a lot. And I have some friends right, right now who are doing something and I don't even know much about it. But the main guy, John, he's doing this thing that's de how to deal with people who have an entitlement attitude. And what I see very clearly is that if we are seeing someone as having an entitlement attitude, And I'm just pausing because it feels right. I got no agenda here, so. Dead space, what would be called dead space on live television. It's actually beautiful silence. And a place from which with wisdom sprouts. People are running at such a fast pace, they have a hard time dealing with any bit of silence. A lot of, I probably, in terms of people watching this video, I probably already lost quite a few viewers. It's like, what's the point? <laughs> what is the point? I know the word entitlement was there, the phrase entitlement. What are we entitled to? I was just up in the park sitting there on the park bench by the water with my eyes closed, kind of just enjoying the silence. And all of a sudden this guy like kind of jumped up on top of the picnic table and put his hands on me and, and I turned around and it was this guy probably in his mid twenties, maybe late twenties, dreadlocks, beard, dirty, and obviously drunk. And he was like, hey, and I just like, hey, whoa, 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 back up. I don't know who you are. I don't know what's happening here. So I need some space. I need my space. And that triggered him. You know, he felt like rejected in that. He was like, hey, man, I'm just trying to. And I was like, I stopped him. I was like, hey, listen, I see the good in you. I know you're good. But I need, this is my space right here. This is my space. And I, it's sacred. And I need to, I need it to be the way that I want it to be. So you need to back up. And he was all, mm, and then he looked at me, just making really long eye contact. He's just kind of like trying to figure me out. And he was like, oh man, this is 
There's love and hate, and I'm I'm this close to going the other side. I'm this close to going the other side. I'm fighting, man. I'm fighting, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stop fighting. I'm gonna go to the other side. And I looked right at him and I said, "Hey, man, you're good." And the only the only thing you you can open up to is just stop fighting. What are you fighting? And he looked at me and he's like, "I'm fighting people like you." And I said, "You're fighting people like me." And he looked at me. And I was like, "I only see you as good. I know you're good. I see it in you." So what are you fighting? I'm just like. Just looking in my eye, it was so beautiful because I could just feel the shared presence there together. <laughs> I could feel his heart being healed through the little bit that we were exchanging. And I said, hey man, where are your friends? And he said, I ain't got no friends, I ain't got nobody. And I said, well, hey, I, I get the sense that if you were to just slow down on the alcohol a little bit, that your friends that are out there that you'd reconnect with them. You know, you'd find these friends that we all want. He's like, ah, you, you, now you're demoralizing me. You can take your, your judgments and keep them over there. Keep them over there. And I said, hey, I only know you as good. No judgments here. None at all. And he just stared into my eyes for like a minute. This confused look on his face. He had these beautiful, big blue eyes. And I got the sense that it was the first time he had had a soul-to-soul -soul connection in a long, long, long time. He was utterly alone and believing that he was alone. And so I really enjoyed just playing that role for him to look deep into his eyes with perfect strength and certainty and knowing of the goodness that's within all of us. It was really beautiful. He started to well up a little bit. And then he said, all I need is my backpack. I said, well, where's your backpack, man? He said, it's up in Ned. And Nederland is a town that's like 25 minutes away. He said, you wanna hitch up there with me? And I said, no, I'm, I'm staying in Boulder today. He was like, all right then, I'm gonna be moving on. Last little bit of eye contact, and I was like, okay, brother, I see you. And I was like, all right, man, all right. And he went on his way. Ah, oh, it feels so good to be in a place where even when I'm, I feel like someone's like accosting me, it's kind of how it was, like he just jumped up on me. And that's the kind of thing that people call the police for, you know, they call the police, someone's har this guy's harassing people because he's drunk and then they lock them up. Police come usually and they lock them up because whoever's complaining, the police are there to keep the complainers from complaining. That's really what I've seen that the police end up being is just when people are afraid to deal with their own conflicts, they call up the police and the police, when they feel the pressure of something needs to be done, they basically go and they, they get the people who people are pointing to saying he, he's being bad or whatever. And I really wish the police would have more fortitude and the people who are calling, I wish the police would say, hey, you know what? Deal with your own conflicts. We are not your parents. We are not your teachers. If there's real physical, you know, some kind of outbreak that's going on where like you can't deal with it yourself, you just absolutely can't, then we'll come check things out. But we're not necessarily just gonna swallow up your version of the story just because you're the one who's calling us. In fact, because you're the one that's calling us, we're actually probably gonna take the other person's story and really listen to it because generally the people who are picking up the phone first to call on someone else, they're the ones who really need to take a look at themselves and really need to feel into things. Can you imagine that if, it, if that's how things work? But no, when you call up the police, they want to, they want action. They're bored. And ultimately they want a reason for their paychecks to keep going up because they can say, well, look how much is going on. You know, we had this many calls and we had this many things. So of course they want it it escalated and it's not really conscious it's just what happens you know people where their money's coming from they want you know everybody wants a raise everybody wants more everybody wants things to go up and when it comes to law enforcement and the judicial system it's just it's too bad 
and attorneys because as they want more and they get more, guess what? It just perpetuates conflict for everyone. It doesn't solve anything. It creates more conflict because then you've got these judges who are making huge decisions in people's lives. Like what's happened with me. You know, a guy on one day made a decision to take my kids out of my life completely and to take two kids' dad out of their life completely just based on a few words. You know, it was like a 20 minute thing. And that's a huge decision that affects so many people and affects so many hearts in such a big way. And that's a lot, you know, and people in that system just become numb to the feelings and that's what allows them to make these huge decisions. But man, and all these families where these big decisions are being made, people who don't really know the people, they don't really know all that's going on and that yet they have the power to make these huge decisions. It's just, it's, it's wrong in every sense of the word. And I mean that without any like emotional charge around it. I mean like it's wrong, meaning for our society, it is not the right way for us to be dealing with things. There are better ways, absolutely better ways. And if you hear me say that, say, well, what are they? Well, that's not for this message here, but they're there, okay? They're there. The truth can be known in situations. You know, conflict can be resolved. We live in a society that essentially just loves conflict. You'll look at the news, they play everything, you know, everything they show us is like sensationalized. People like feed off of it. And so um, hearts are not being reconnected, hearts are not being reconciled. And ultimately that's what we can do. And that's what we have before us in each moment is a chance, just like I did with the guy at the park bench, is to see the good in people and to connect and still take care of our space without needing to shun that person, call the police on them and get them taken away so that we can feel more comfortable. Because ultimately every time we hurt someone else like that and push someone off, do something like that to avoid our own discomfort, we actually create more discomfort within us. And that's why people who are cynical become more and more cynical over time. People who are depressed usually become more and more and more depressed. You know, whatever feelings like you're, you're doing things out of control to avoid, you're, you're literally just adding to that. And then life tends to hem people in and create a bubble. And then once that bubble pops, people poo, can come out and start to see things in a new way. But it takes big things for most people to see things in a new way. A, you know, a suicide in the family or someone getting really sick and you know, like with cancer or something like that or a big divorce or you know, just all these big things that just shred through us. And it all can be healed. It all can be forgiven. It all can be felt through. And the peace that surpasses all of the mind's understanding is there on the other side of all the feelings that we feel through them. Like in my situation, all this wrong that's been done to me, you know, I fortunately was in a position that I knew that pain is the fuel for real personal growth. Everyone really knows that, you know, but very rarely do then people take it seriously and use it consciously. So I consciously knew, hey, pain is the fuel for real personal growth and real heart expansion. So I just relaxed into the ride, relaxed into the feelings and just trust the universe and trust that things will work out. And here I am, feeling great, having gone through a lot and having seen how much strength and peace has come up during this time. And so I invite you who's with me right now to just know that what you see in me, if you see peace, if you see strength, if you see that in me, because it's here. And if you vibe with it, if, if you believe it, just know it's the same thing that's in you. It's the same light that's in all of us. That's what's so exciting. That's where the confidence and the certainty comes from is knowing like it's in all of us. No one's better than anyone else. There's no hierarchy. We're one beautiful energy of love and light that is inhabiting different bodies and having different human experiences. We get to be people. Here I am. I get to be Ryan. You get to be you. It's a beautiful life, a beautiful endeavor. So in the name of our shared light and humanity, over and out, buddy. Love you.